Ellen Page had never done it before either. Yeah, she hadn't really done it before either. But the other thing that was lovely was there were a lot of times when they would say, you know, these lines, can we use them if we like them, you know? And I'm oh, like, yeah. So this yeah. is the first time I've seen, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're the alter ego for, for Leonard Shelton in this movie. <laughs> a little bit of the, the Catherine Keener, you know, Nicole Hall of Center relationship, the writer-director. <laughs> you know. uh, so, so is this the first time you've actually sort of done the more personal film that has you in it in this way? My very first feature which was... Which I never saw. <laughs> which I will have to give you a copy of. Um, it is... Was, was more in this vein. It was my initial instinct as a narrative, fil narrative filmmaker was to work from the inside out and and draw from more autobiographical places and and ha and be really vulnerable, you know, um, on screen. And then uh, as an artist, and then also to have a story that has room for some real pure cinematic language, visual storytelling, um, music and sound driven. Uh, narrative, you know, this combination of picture and sound, and so it was, it was really nice to be able to go back to that, because I made three pictures in a row in between these two pictures that were both really at, from the point of view of an observer, you know, and, and asking for heavy collaboration from the actors, because I don't know from male friendships, I've never been inside of one before, you know, so I really was sort of the sociologist exploring new terrain. Um, and also, it's so they're so conversation driven, they're so dialogue driven that there isn't a lot of room for visual poetry, you know, or cinematic, you know, or subjective filmmaking or exploring sort of psychic landscapes and stuff. So it was really satisfying to go back to a story that allowed for some of that. So you're you're very much still part of the Seattle community. You used your same band, of yeah, crew yes. and all that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Show us a lot of Seattle. It's quite beautiful, I have to say. Um, so, um, you're, we've talked. This is a, there's a long series of conversations that we've had. If you were to define the changes that you made in this movie that surprised you in terms of your growth uh, as a filmmaker, or, or what you've added to your skill set. Well, I really wanted to break out of um, the three character, one location. Uh, format, which I used for three films in a row, and and so that felt nice, just to stretch my wings a little bit and be more expansive, and, um, and just be able to play on this balancing act between different characters and their own individual arcs and how they may intersect or almost intersect and then finally intersect. And, you know, the, that kind of structure was a very different kind of filmmaking. I mean, the edit room experience was extremely different. Normally, the last few films, it's really been about trying, it's been like trying to edit a documentary and writing from all this material, this beautiful material that the actors are giving to you through improvisation. Um, and this time, it was really trying to put a puzzle together. Um, with all these disparate pieces, and I kept switching the order you have different scenes, layers so of stories going different on, different layers of stories, stories. And making sure, yeah, the balancing was correct between the different arcs, and you didn't want to lose the thread of one and while you were exploring another. And it was, it was, it was like it, it like stretched whole new, created whole new neuron neural paths in my, in my brain. Yeah. But before we go, um, just uh, both of you, Josh Pace is just extraordinary. So yes. And I have, I've seen him in many things. He's one of those character actors who's always good. But how did you know? I mean, uh, tell me what he's like that, that, you, that you got this great. For me, it was, it was for some reason Year of the Dog. I don't know if you've seen it. If you haven't, you should. I, I saw that film and I became immediately obsessed with that actor. I was just, I thought he was brilliant. I was like, who is this guy? He's so great. And then I got to meet him. Um, because I happened to be at, at the screening of Please Give in, in, at Tribeca and, and got to go backstage because the director and I share the same agent and I was back there and there was Josh and I, I could barely speak to him. I was so excited to meet him. He was very gracious, he was very kind and then found out that I had directed Hamte, which he had just seen a week before and he completely flipped out. He was like, you, 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 you directed Hamte? And he, it was so funny. So then the two of us were just like these geeky, you know, we were so excited to meet each other and we'd been talking about me, um, working with him for a long time. But he really is incredible. Another film that never got a lot of play was Leaves of Grass with Edward Norton. 
and he plays this. Did you see that? No, mm -mm. no. He plays this, again, a supporting role, and there is a scene I could watch a thousand times, and it's actually similar. I think he's an orthodontist. It was after I'd already written my script, but but it's sort of a similar thing, but he, I mean, then he sort of breaks out and is normal, but it, I mean, it would be genius. 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 Oh, that guy! I love that guy, too. Josh Pike. Okay? Yes. And I hope that this movie I really do. lets people really know who he is. And I hope you two work together. Yeah. Okay. Me too. Me too. <laughs> Thanks,